The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for joining me in this uh, discussion. And uh, I very much request you to just stop me whenever you feel like and uh, clarify any of the doubts or raise any queries or anything like that. Let it be an interactive discussion more than like a lecture or anything like that. Uh, so we are going to talk about uh, the students' projects, especially in the engineering uh, students' projects, end semester projects, or uh, a final project, what we are, what the students are going to do, and uh, I hope most of the target uh, audience who are listening this are some sort of uh, faculty or some sort of associated with uh, engineering colleges. Um, so we all know that the engineering student project, end semester project, for uh, allowing them to do for the whole six months without giving them any other subject load or anything like that, uh, is mainly to exercise what they have exactly learned and how they are going to mold themselves of what all the tools and techniques tips and everything required for their career. So that's a very important learning need for the students. And uh, as teachers, we have got a fantastic, I mean, phenomenal responsibility to ensure that their learning need is satisfied and uh, their uh, curiosity is kindled and uh, they would become better engineers. So we sow the seeds, as I put in the last line, uh, for you know, the better engineers uh, coming out of, uh, in our country. Uh, so what I would like to do is not beat around the bush of the same thing what we all know, uh, but a few ideas what uh, you know, I have been able to do for the past few years. So what we have to look at is not a small, small independent uh, uh, projects which these people, these kids do, uh, but instead we can take a large picture and we can take a problem which would probably take you know two years or three years to solve and then break them into small components of six months, six months each and probably allow you know, incrementally the students to take part in it, participate in it, contribute and then you can have a big picture at the end of three years or four years or whatever is the time depending on the problem which you have taken. 
instead what the trend right now is what is happening what i can see or what i can hear from around the engineering colleges in my state i mean there are quite a few engineering colleges in my state which is coming now it happens to be coming now so what happens students just go browse around take their previous students batch of work and then do some sort of you uh, know face of change the names or you no know, do some sort of uh, very incremental or very some silly extension to whatever has been done and then again submit a big report maybe a few pages 50 60 pages and then there is that's the end of it of course there is going to be a review there's going to be an a viva vote viva vote by some other engineering college faculty but all this seems to be done you no know, without any kind of a spirit or what it has to be done but just like uh, you know a work which needs to be completed and you know you just to get a, a minimum thing for your degree but unfortunately what i would request or what i would look at is let our we as faculty take it as a big picture and then try to take incremental small work get done by these students for which not only the students must be willing to accept but even our organization our universities even our academic councils they also must look at this in a bigger picture and accept small small increments on the project so that's what i would like to take i mean at least you can start up and look at it that and another most important aspect which many of them you know which is a big barrier is how are we going to fund such a big project which is going to extend for 3 years or 5 years do i put it from my pocket or definitely my management or my college is not going to do it so how do i go that puts a barrier and stops you from thinking really big or thinking some very very essential social problems to be addressed which is relevant to your field or to your discipline but i would like to bring to your notice that there are entities like prism probably most of you might have uh, heard about it it's an initiative by dst department of science and technology wherein you get funding up to something like 75000 1 lakh specially for students projects and then there are organizations like birac uh, biotechnology industry research assistance council what they do is they take up even huge bigger projects and fund you even up to 30 40 lakhs even provided your project or your uh, uh, idea your student project aims at coming out with a product and coming out with a solution to an existing problem which you can prove instead of just you know ending up in some sort of an iit paper or some very fancy work which currently which is what being expected out of end semester projects not very many people at least at the ug level expect something like you know bringing out presentations and this but that has been the norm for pg as well as phd student projects who just if you are able to submit some three four papers in some refereed journals or even many other journals which are proliferating these days online journals there ends the matter that is the end of your project and unfortunately this is not the case with a very small engineering college which is you no know, privately financed and have a few hundred students or a very huge university governmental or private deemed university for that matter still they are all running in the same rut you no know, which just you publish some papers and there ends the matter you don't worry about your report or anybody else sees that report it's a big waste of time of everybody else so instead of that what i would like you as teachers to ensure is you put the focus on product it can be very simple it can be a small sensor addressing a particular very small problem or it can be addressing a survey which going which is going a traffic engineering survey which is going to help some body who to come up with some sort of a solution this can be very very simple but still i would say that gives you phenomenal experience as a student and as a teacher who will who your horizon will improve if you keep thinking on these things and that's probably what exactly expected out of you teachers provided to your students mold them or give them the proper direction like what are the problems existing how it can be addressed by technology how it is relevant for them to provide think about it dream and bring out solution is these are the something which you would like to inculcate in your students at least that's what i talk about when i say motivate students to take part in contests today i see maybe a past past few years there are lots of contests being conducted by many deemed universities many colleges into annual events or you no know, so many contests and so what i would request or what i would suggest is you motivate your students to ask them to take part in such contests of course the time window allowed for you is very small this is 6 months but you need to really start maybe from the fourth year or maybe even from the third year if you get a very very interesting and very hard working set of students where you can establish a rapport and it's not just the last 6 months you worry about some sort of an output to be produced in terms of students project so as a teachers what 
what i would like to say is you have to walk the extra mile think about so many projects and so many solutions to existing problems what you have in your relevant fields which is very much applicable to in your area or in what you can think about and then line them up for your students so that they will be able to select it sir i will work in this project sir i will work in that project i am interested in doing this so you can give them more inputs only if you have done your homework if you have created all your uh, problem statements if you have googled about it thoroughly researched about it and then offer them to students so that this kind of meaningful dialogue or exchange can happen in terms of school projects and today in the online world there are so many many platforms which are available for mentoring which are available for supporting you if you you can say i am in a very small town or a very small village i don't have access to like people like you who are in chennai or mumbai or maybe in bigger cities so what do i do this you don't have to worry about it because you just open your online world you all you have to do, do is just seek and just get the support from people who are willing to offer it to you in terms of projects or in terms of any guidance or in terms of mentorship so i would like you to first of all go through i mean aware become aware of what are the support available and then open it up to your students who will in turn catch it up and take it forward that's the only way these promoters i mean these people who are offering support is willing to do and you are supposed to take it as a catalyst and then get it your students down the line and there are so many websites for students project after you complete or after you take up to a certain level you can publish it in some in terms of you no know, source code if you if it's a computer science programming project where it will be useful for anybody who is further searching so you contribute to the whole uh, let us say ecosystem there wherein what even if it's a small work which is done by you is going to matter take it up to the next level so basically we are all trying to sow seeds in terms of project ideas in terms of project implementations through students projects and uh, definitely there's going to be a lot of very very patient monitoring care and uh, i'm sure the results you can see only in a few years it's not just some some years to come like so be prepared to do that in, and we must also be prepared to do that by doing our all our homework in terms of all the resources getting collected and we should probably you know suggest the students that these are the projects available these are the areas which i am interested in i would like to guide you know you pick up any of these and it not only just ends there i'm sure there will be a lot of very very imaginative and individual students who are very bright who will come up with some ideas on those ideas you must be able to work get them the resources where is available and then show them these are all the resources available for example somebody wants to do a drone which is seems to be very popular these days a helicopter or something like that so you can add no you put a small camera onto the helicopter and see you know whether you can capture it you can do a while so now this becomes not only a hardware guy some sort of a computer science group also has to mix in who will be able to take care of uploading and downloading the video information from the camera so basically it is like a multi discipline where you can involve your colleagues from other disciplines and other departments and make it big and then offer small small chunks to individual students of different departments and collectively bring it bring it out a, a meaningful or a very useful solution for the particular problem which you have taken am i going very fast or is it fine yes sir it's, it's fine sir okay so uh, a small tips which uh, whatever i have uh, uh, gone through uh, now very simple basic thing anybody can do is there are a lot of articles which are coming on as new innovations which are found in science engineering technology sections of you know, different magazines for example i took the example in hindu in hindu probably on wednesday or somewhere i believe a tuesday i believe you get a full page where a lot of innovations in engineering and technology are coming out so you as teachers need to keep it abreast so what is going on what can be possibly taken up by us by our students by our community and then contribute to it is what something you have to always keep on the lookout which i always do and encourage students to tell the real life problems like for example simple apps i told you in the previous slide you can take about problems in traffic how do you manage the traffic what are the kind of solutions which you can give them what about automatic traffic uh, movement and so on and of course there are a lot of uh, rfid based uh, parking systems where you no know, you find out which is this uh, free slot and then try to make it smoother so you make it people's uh, lives easier 
and of, of course toll collection where people need not have to wait hours together on weekends especially whereas you have some sort of an RFID or something like that which will automatically connect it to a payment gateway will get the toll from the car and then just send it out faster. So these are the kind of real life problems which you as teachers have to look at and then try to give it to your students, you know, give a sort of solution and say let them work on it. Now, this, this need not come as a full solution in one just end semester group what I'm trying to talk about, it can span about three or four. So you need to plan ahead and ensure that all these things are available, especially the funding. When you talk about funding, you need to give it a minimum of six months to one year for you to actually get it. The more higher the funding, the more time it's going to take. So you need to do a big homework and then once that is ready, you can always involve your students in a very, very meaningful and a very interesting way and I guess that's what even the students are probably looking at. It's not just you know, some sort of a very obscure typically paper they take some three, four papers and take some concepts, they make a kichiri, they make a mix of all these things and then I can sub submit something after, which is just again, you know, uh, which is going to just make it a paper editing work other than you know, anything else. So it's us as a teacher to expose the students to real life problems, do that we need to get exposed ourselves first by going through. And uh, there are a lot of free events provided by you know, semiconductor majors like national instruments, if you take about electronics and some uh, semiconductors. You take about Infosys webinars, they talk about a lot, lot of people that in the industry, they come and talk about you know, what are their experiences, what are their projects. So you need to attend, you as teachers need to attend and ensure that if some very thing, something very much interesting is coming up, keep in touch with the person who has, con who has started or initiated that and then introduce your students to those uh, projects or those events so that they will be able to follow and be in the next step than what it's they are existing right now. And um, another thing what is available today, I mean frequent maybe for a few years down there, a couple of years is there are lots of available items which are very, very difficult to get maybe about 10 years back. You just can't even imagine there's no way you can get because it will be available in somewhere in China, somewhere in Germany and somewhere in very special you, there is no chance for you to get it. Whereas today all such things are available on the internet just at the click of a button. You pay online and they get delivered it in your place. So you need to look out in your area what are the new products which are available in such sites like eBay, Amazon and so on so that you will get new ideas by going through those items which I happen to get it so that's why I'm just trying to share it with you. Just keep browsing what are the new products in your field of interest. I'm sure you land up with hundreds of projects because you only have got the resources. These are the things available using which you can solve a particular problem of which is in your area or which is in your interest or which is in your budget and so on. And uh, you have got uh, internet again you can use it for contests. For example, I attended a contest uh, from Amrita TBI which is called Pitch Fest. They conduct it every year and uh, I was fortunate enough to win that particular Pitch Fest 2013 uh, for my idea of MCAP which you are going to look at in, in, at a more in depth uh, today. So I would want many of your students, many of your projects to come up, see the world in such sources and then you can take off in that way. And um, that's what. So you need to do a bit of work, keep the pro projects ready, tightened. At least you don't have to completely work, but you should have a plan ready and ensure that your students are given that in a nutshell. That these, these things are the steps. So this six months you're going to do. Next batch is going to take up the next and so on. If such a plan of action is available, I'm sure it is very easy. It's going to be very much interesting both for you as well as for students who are going to join. And last, it's not that you always have to look out for projects. You can encourage the students to go through the same processes and uh, you will be surprised by the kind of ideas and the kind of projects which they come up. It need not necessarily be only in IEEE papers or ASM transactions on CAD and so on and so forth. It will just be from real life for problem which they have seen and they have got an idea to try it out. Which I would like you to encourage, work upon and bring out, see the daylight of their idea. And uh, as uh, I mean, I've been uh, throwing about, show the students the resources in terms of websites, in terms of items available and they will be able to explore further and further till they reach a particular stage where they can really make use of it. And uh, if possible, I would like you know, small groups created in your institution, uh, maybe who are interested in doing a real good meaningful ensign projects, but you need to catch them in the third year or fourth year, I mean third year itself. So that you no, know, some sort of this planning activity discussion can go on and once when they do the real end time, it's not just the six months they would have started a, a way back, way before the, I mean, the end project time which has come 
and really it's going to be a very very phenomenal effect or output which you can reap if you can take such exercises and of course google google you can't just live without it at the moment so you have got everything whatever is required how to do a tutorial do it yourself and so on the, the whole world is opened up for you all i would like you to do is just pick out which is very good which is the best for you and which is possible for you and take those things and give it to your students it's like you know transforming a uh, big uh, 13 kva cut down to 230 volts and then cut down to 12 volts and then give it to students like that you can just chop off and just abstract it and then give in small dosages which can be absorbed by the students and they can in turn make the tick uh, clock going up and the most important thing is you need to network with like minded people and groups that's why i say you form a small group and you can see such groups existing in your neighboring colleges in other if you can see an online they'll be opening up you no know, lot of memberships or they'll be calling you to collaborate participate so you need to encourage yourself and also put your students onto this so that now you can go to the next level very easily and uh, project reviews to do that all these things it it takes you you don't have to you know make a very strict rigid that you no know, you have to submit some 10 pages of review and so on it can be some sort of an informal but at the same time it has to be very very diligent and the spirit must be maintained the students must enjoy whatever the work the problem they are working on to do their work the slog which they have to go to they must really love them that is you have to make them that way feel that way that you no know, it's not just a sort of a rigmarole uh, 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 run in the mill stuff which they have to do just to get their degree instead of that you must inculcate that they are engineers and they are trying to provide some sort of a solution to an existing problem and motivate them so that you no know, the spirit is maintained in the engineering in their in semester projects uh so now these are a, a very few snaps which i could take up uh, it's not mine many of the things are done by many of our group many of our friends the first thing what you see is uh, just a very low cost smart class system today smart class they are available at 60000 70000 and so on whereas what we could do is to the projector we attach a small y remote you can hopefully i i hope you can see the mouse let's so this is a small y remote which is useful y stands w i i wireless uh, infrared remote so using that we have a very small infrared led can it attach to a pen like device and you can write on the board click and all that stuff the entire thing i took it from a ted talk tv i hope you are all looking at uh, uh, innovations in ted talk you have got a so, small 10 15 minutes video presenting their output so i'm sure many of your students and wish many of your students output come in such forums or some such forum so that you no know, so many people will get benefited in this so this is what one small project we implemented at wales university we put it in about six classes so that lot of teachers are using it and finding it very useful to explain and so on so the cost like no smart class no no we need 60000 one lakh and so on it's not necessary we can do the whole thing set up in a very few thousands of rupees so that is where the cost effectiveness the innovativeness which comes across and uh, here this is a small micro windmill we have put it on top of our college so it generates uh, something like about uh, uh, 750 watts which is sufficient to run a uh, today computer uh for about 4 5 hours a day so it charges for about uh, maybe 6 7 hours and you can read the power for about 2 hours that's the kind of an out so these are the kind of project ideas which i would like you to do it involves electrical engineering students it involves mechanical engineering students so it involves civil engineering for electing there was a big so i called all of them asked them to give them an idea so they all involved very very enthusiastically and connected so that is the kind of uh, interdisciplinary work which i would like you to move up on and kick start Uh, now this is a project uh, which is done by my friend uh, he is uh, very good at uh, he is a chemical engineer and he has got a lot of solutions on enzymatic uh, catalytic reactions now this is a project which actually converts uh, organic waste what i mean organic waste is for waste from uh, hotels or households which is no vegetables or food stuff which is left which are left over and so on so you just put it in that uh, container and in about uh, first 20 days i get you don't get any output but after the 21st day you continuously get biogas you can extract ethanol from it ethyl alcohol from it which he is converting it into petrol which he is able to produce kind of heat. and from this he generates power because of the steam which comes up he generates power so that is a kind of uh, project small small project which he has implemented he is a consultant for many industries and he does this now as a teacher 
can link up with these kind of individuals and ask your students to participate in small small level in small incremental level and you can see that you know, their knowledge will get expanded or phenomenally and at the same time you no know, we can churn out many many products you know now this is again done by this person he is dr krishna kumar and it is uh, an anaerobic activated sludge reactor so what he has got plans is even industrial if you invest have is available which you can make use of it which you don't have to pay anything for it all you need to do is just make use of it in a better way and uh, we have got another tool i would like you to show a screenshot of that for a minute so i'm sure you would have seen a moodle uh, this thing this is what we are looking at so i have added a moodle authoring tool so that anybody who is registered they can have a look at this it will basically tell you how to add content how to create your own links and how to put resources to your students and so on so anybody who is interested they can just email to me gauri@mastersolutions.co.in and i can create an id for you so you can create individual projects for your students and they you can ask them to link up and then take it up next forward interactions need not be just limited to email they can have these kind of collaborative tools wherein you can take it up to next level and there is another tool what i am talking about is a big blue button which actually is a collaborative tool which allows both audio and video get connected to a group a set of uh, people like for example if you look at a scenario wherein your students a few of them are in different states or different cities they all can be i mean assemble in one particular place like we have assembled here and this particular tool will allow you to collaborate both audio and video and it has also got a whiteboard facility so that you can whatever desktop you are having it can be shared students can talk raise questions and so on and even this tool is available free that is any interested teacher who wants to conduct or who wants to organize a group or conduct a review or whatever it for them all you need to do is just mail me and uh, we can take it i go back to the slide where i my mail is taking a bit of time so instead of wasting for it we'll go back to the presentation so you can mail me on gauri@mastersolutions.co.in for an id in these two i mean i expect you to just play around with it you don't have to really start seriously using it and so on you can just get yourself acquainted like what are the tools available and who knows if you are in a computer science science stream or a program ec background you might come out with better solutions which can be added to this which is going to make it even more powerful so that is the kind of your your ideas are most welcome in fact i am working on different uh, other ideas like uh, uh, electric two wheelers where whether we can see the range today is about 90 kilometers whether we can extend it to 200 300 by making use of efficient batteries by making use of efficient charging system i try to put a small dynamo in front Uh, which will be able to charge up uh, the battery sets which are available and so on so i want your students as well as yourself imagine go to some real world problems and see whether what is 
possible what can be done by you. And uh, we like to go a little bit in depth in one of my pet projects that is uh, uh, MCAPD is what I have titled. It is uh, a mobile continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis. Uh, so now dialysis is required for patients who are uh, unfortunate enough to lose both their kidneys or whose kidneys have failed their function of extracting the toxic content in the blood and passing it out as urine. So if they have lost their kidney, the only way for the survival is getting a transplant. Somebody else must be able to offer them kidney, donate them kidney, and this they will be placed surgically for the patient who have lost it so that they can continue their life. But unfortunately, not even not even one in thousand get such transplants, and even if they do get, there are a lot of questions regarding their survival, their efficiency, and so on. So the only survival option available is for them to go through a dialysis. Now dialysis, the main dialysis, what we all know about is called hemodialysis. That is blood will come out of our body, will be pumped out of our body, go through a filtering mechanism wherein urea, creatinine, these are the major toxic salts which has to be put from the blood, cleared, it will be filtered and then the blood again will be pumped into the body. Now to do this hemodialysis, you have to, patients have to go to a hospital, stay there for half a day because this dialysis will take about two hours or three hours depending on the patient's condition. Uh, so like this they have to do two times or three times a day depending on the patient's condition. So now you imagine what kind of a lifestyle the patient will have if he has to go to two or three half a days in their week to a hospital and then go through doing nothing. And uh, not only just a travel time and the thing, it will be a big break from his service. Suppose he is working in some banks, in some normal, normal uh, like us, when he is not able to do, his lifestyle will be totally crippled. So as against this, there is another form of dialysis called continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis. Now peritoneal dialysis, in our body part, we have got a cavity called peritonus. Now on one side of the peritonus wall, blood flows through, blood from all the parts of the body flows through it naturally. Now what happens is, the peritoneal wall will act as a membrane. And what we do is pump in a highly concentrated glucose solution into the cavity. Now what we do is we surgically insert a tube, make an operation. One end of the tube will be inside the peritoneal cavity and one end of the tube will be outside the body. So now, I thought I'll show you the picture. Yeah. So this is something like uh, an abdominal cavity. And now what happens is the dialysis, we have a highly concentrated dialysis solution. As I said, it will be in a bag which is about one and a half liters. So just like the gravity, you connect it in a higher position through a stand and open up the tube which is connected. There will be a small tube which you can lock and then open up or close it. So fluid from the higher position will go into your peritoneal cavity. Now you have to retain this fluid for four hours in your body. That is called dwelling. So if you retain it for four hours in your body, because of the concentration difference, the peritoneus wall acts as a membrane and all urea creatinine will permeate from the blood into this particular fluid. Now after four hours what you do is, you do a drain. Now you close the connection from the top and you open up the connection which leaves the bottom tube. What happens is, the fluid from the stomach comes out and this fluid, the drain fluid, you will dispatch it in a restroom or any toilet or anything like that safely. Now, this particular process is a CAPD process, the fill process, the dwell process and the drain process which we have just seen. This has to be done three times a day. So every four hours you have to go to a place which has to be highly sterile. Because what happens is, there is a tube which is directly going into your body and if you expose it to external environment, it can very easily catch infection and you get up into peritonitis. There is a disease called peritonitis where the walls of the peritonitis will get infected. So now this has to be done in a highly sterile environment and the patient before touching these tubes he has to undergo an elaborate procedure of cleaning his hands with soap solution and so on and then do this particular process. So, so the objective of my project is to provide the patient a normal lifestyle where he is offered, uh, I mean when he is affected by the dialysis, where he will be able to do dialysis anywhere, wherever he is, either he is in college or he is in a career, he is in office, workplace and so on. And my other objective is, it's not only going to be, you know, anywhere, anytime, anywhere, but it also has to be very, very affordable because this, you see, this dialysis, he has to continue till his lifetime, till he dies. So the cost per month, currently the cost per month for this particular treatment will be about 15 to 18,000 rupees per month. Imagine how many people will be able to afford to undergo such
kind of a city. So my idea is to ensure that it is reduced at least to some 4,000, 5,000 so that more people will be able to manage even if they are affected with this kind of business. I'm sure even 4,000 there are so many people who cannot afford, maybe we'll look at them at a later point. But right now at least if it can be brought down to, so that many people can be covered into the dialysis so that their lives can be extended. And another thing is there are no proper dialysis machine in our rural areas. Maybe metros they'll have and even there there's a great demand going on. And tier two cities, yes, you will have very few where there will be great demand or there won't be any proper effective dialysis uh, centers. But you think about small villages where people get afflicted, they have to travel all the way to these tier two cities, towns and cities or metros and get their thing just for survival. So instead of that, my idea is ensure that they can do it wherever they are in their homes or in their offices, colleges, wherever it is. So that is another objective is there are something like auto cycler machines which can do this automatically in the night time but I am trying to provide a cost effective alternative which is going to be one tenth of the cost available of whatever is existing in the world. So these are the kind of objectives which are clearly laid down for my problem which I have taken. So I would request you also to analyze the problem and ensure that what are the points which you are going to address and once you have taken what are the ways and means to go about it. So you can see a picture the need is to create an affordable and accessible healthcare device for dialysis. It is estimated that there are about 1 lakh patients added every year and about 2 lakh patients are waiting in Chennai alone for getting their dialysis done. You can see the volume kind of people suffering for want of getting dialysis done. So the idea of MCAPD is as I summed up, bring life into their lives is my motto of bringing out this particular product. So this is a, a rudimentary picture of what I am trying to conceive or what I am, almost 70 percent of it is over. So you can see that my device is a wearable device. This is a belt which can be worn in your waist and this is the device what I am trying to create which will take a, it has got an embedded controller and it has got a peristatic pump which will do the pumping in and pumping out. It can change the direction, it can change the speed according to the control or according to the command program residing in the microcontroller and what happens is there is a, a sterile connector which we have created, which we have designed. This is allow, this is going to take care of uh, uh, ensuring that there is no infection even though this dialysis happens anywhere outside in the external environment. And uh, this is the bag, which the fluid bag which we saw ha hanging on the stand. We can either connect it in the waste itself through a, a Velcro strap or you can have it in a military bag and just put it on your bag when you are travelling or when you are moving around or anywhere. So I will just show you pictures of what is available. So this is a small box of prototype. It is in a very crude stage but nevertheless it can do the job. So this is the battery what we have taken. These are some buttons. Actually we are going to, in addition to this button interface, we are going to have a smartphone interface where all these button controls like start, stop or record or anything like that can be done through a smartphone. And with the help of smartphone the advantage is you can even have a patient monitoring system where every dialysis log is recorded and it can be sent to your doctors in case the dialysis quality is very bad and cannot do and so on. So you can see how a simple idea just keeps on extending and building. If you sufficiently think about it and sufficiently talk about it to various people, I have talked to many doctors, I have talked to many NGOs who give dialysis, I have talked to many patients. So that is the effort which you have to do even though it is a student project, it is only a six semester, a six month project and so on. You need to conceive it in such a big way so that these uh, so for example, a small MBA group can take care of the survey of this particular product. As one group can go to nephrologists and see what is the problem. One group could have gone to uh, patients and see what are their pain points and check out. So these are the ways which probably I have done. So I would request you also to take up student project in particular way. So we will just go back to our next uh, picture, the peristatic pump. And this is again an innovation or an invention made by in-house by my team and my friends. So actually peristatic what happens, this is the tube which comes out from the body and this is the tube which goes to a fluid bank or the fluid which you are going to pull, that what I call a CAPD fluid. So you can see three rollers rotating and they are pinching this tube against the wall. So according to our Bernoulli's principle, what happens is once it is pinched, the fluid, the air gap will suck the fluid inside from here, what would be the fluid and keep passing it out. So that in no way this fluid inside will get in contact with any of the pumping mechanism. So such a device is a peristatic pump. So this is available world over, lot of people are doing it. But what we have achieved is 
it's a micro miniaturization what we have done we our peristaltic pump can just you can just open up the snack it will slide out you can just connect this tube because in our case the patient has to put one tube every day yeah, so that at the night when the dialysis is over when he goes back home he has to discard this particular uh, uh, sterile connector what we have to so we need a mechanism wherein the patient can insert it automatically and easily so this is something which we have thought about over many months and there are many inputs from many students and many uh, working people working professionals and they have got it out at this level so, sterile connector so this is again a rudimentary uh, drawing of a sterile connector idea and this is what we have done on our own hands on so the idea is this is a cap which the patient has to remove it by touching it open it and this end of it he has to connect it there will be a screw like uh, thread available here which he has to bring it up there and then connect it so that the fluid from the bag will go into the uh, peritonis or the fluid from the peritonis will come out uh, into the drain bag. Now doing this anywhere outside is going to create a big problem because of the infection. You are not even supposed to touch with your open hands this particular portion inside this cap. So that what we do is put inside this like plastic like thing so that on the cover you operate, you open it up, close it, connect it, so that you are avoiding the risk of get, your hands touching that particular very, very sensitive portion and getting infection and so on. So that's how we beat infection. Now this particular tube, we have patented it and I'm awaiting patent for it. So you can see very big, very complex uh, situations or problems can be thought about in very simple terms, simple to get out about like this. And the fluid bags, of course, this is some demo which we have shown somewhere. So the, the fluid bags are something like this. One of it is connected. And these are our small microcontrollers. And these are the switch what we saw. And this is the one version previous. Now the, our current version is a, a one fourth of what size you are seeing here. And it can still do the job of pumping in and pumping out of the vitamins and free. So that's background and a bit of computer science background. That's it. So now what happens, I went through so many multidisciplinary people, of course, I had the fortunate uh, fortune of uh, talking to various people who are doing CAPD and then trying to talk with them how to go about it, what are their pain points and so on. So what I would request you as teachers is you know, just keep on looking at problems what is available, of course there are plenty in our society and try to look at positive way of finding solutions and contributing solutions for their problems which will definitely help you, you know, identify so many, many projects, small, small projects for the students. And of course, the IP, uh, we have patented for the mini miniature peristatic pump, we have patented for sensors, what we have used, and we have patented for the serial connector, what we are talking about, and so on. And the advantage what we have got is, as I tell you, I want to keep it very low cost, one tenth of existing, and uh, it's going to be very easily used by people who are not even you know, literates. The, the system will take care of automatically the pumping in, pumping out, alerting the patient, something is wrong, and so on. So the patient intervention is kept to a very, very minimal in these issues with this MCAPD. And uh, the impact is it's going to lift the spirits of the renal patients because they can, the dialysis will happen automatically. They don't have to go back from their jobs or from their colleges or schools and they can still survive properly without any. So these are the kind of outputs or outcomes of what, what I'm trying to do. So what I had taken is something like a design and development is something like for two life for two months for especially peristatic pump and sensors. And uh, design and development of control circuits, I took a two month which went on parallelly with different set of groups of students. And uh, fabrication of belt and latch mechanism, what you're talking about, it's still going on. It's not that we have come to an end stage, it's an ongoing process. And uh, we are trying to do an integration and testing with uh, our guide, Dr. Rajan Ravichandran at Mayat Hospital, Chennai. And once they are through, what I would like to do is you know, take the approvals and certifications uh, from different entities like approvals I have to take from medical device regulation authorities and certifications I would like to have CE certifications, ISI certifications and so on and once I am through I am ready for commercialization of it. So I have taken up uh, the, from a small student level project up to a commercialization which is this particular product I am very proud and very happy to say it is nowhere available in the world. So that is the kind of vision I expect you to have and it's not just for bragging. I would like you to think on those lines. You have a vision which is going to be very, very broad, very open, so that so many things can happen. So this is a new news item which says Chennai has got a lot of kidney problems, to pay two lakh people duration. I mean patients wait for this thing and so on. And so now we are really 
there are any questions or anything about what you would so really like to answer it. Hello, any questions? Any uh, nothing of that sort? Uh, one question. Any space by innovation in project work? Any special? Come again, sorry. See, what you have to do is we should look at results and not IEEE papers. First step. Because IEEE papers talk at a very high research level, which you don't get everyday innovation is the need of the hour. So what I would like you to do is you know, go through DI, DIY, do it yourself, look at contest. So if you take up that as probably I'm sure not papers end up in IEEE journals. Did I answer you? Does that give you some sort of a... Yes, sir. How do my entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial skills students? Exactly. That's the million dollar question. Everybody too small. No, what we need to do is we need to have some sort of a safety net for these students. Uh, I myself, I did my MS entrepreneurship at IIT Madras and uh, all basic job for a student just take a job and goes up. So he'll the, on day one himself, he, he'll be provided with some money. And then, you know, he can take himself to so on. No, what we do is offer some such stipend or some sort of you know, incentive for students first to pick up and ensure that they have they can sustain their day or they lay off or they are not uh, financial. Investor. So, 